Hey everybody, Scott with Tango Down Production again. Hey, real quick, uh, we're kind of following up videos on the uh, weapon retention techniques and use of force and stuff of that nature involving uh, weapon retention. So, um, again, we got the Glock 17 uh, dumb gun here. Uh, my friend Aaron with Defensive Concepts and Solutions kind of helped me out here. We're kind of trading off tonight doing some weapon retention videos. Um, you're in a concealed carry format, and say you're printing or whatever reason, say, you know, I mean, you're out and about and whatever reason you kind of give off that vibe like, hey, I'm armed. Okay, great. So whatever reason that an individual has identified you and said, hey, you know what, I, I know that guy's got a gun. I've seen it or I've seen it printing or whatever, and he decides to breach your safe zone and he comes in from the back. Because most people, if, if you're going to be disarmed, it's not they're going to walk up to you and ask you what time it is or what your favorite color is and reach in and grab your gun. Okay, it's not going to happen as you're seeing it coming. Okay, it's going to most likely happen from the ninja position. Um, back here, um, if he comes in and it just grabs. Now they're going to grab, again, this has got it. this should be a snake-like snap of a reflex. The minute somebody touches your waistline and grabs that gun, immediately, the first thing, again, you want to do is I like to trap and lower my center of gravity. Okay, I'm here. I want to block up here in case I've got a punch or an arm coming around to attempt to choke me. So now I've at least defended against that. Immediately, the first thing I want to do is get him off of that. I'm going to spin in here. I'm going to strike him right in the groin with a blade of the hand. If you can come around and see this. So it's going to be coming here. I'm going to snap. Okay, I'm going to go for a groin. I might even come back with a rake, with a claw rake, and try and crush his peach. And then from there, I'm going to be able to come down and break and snap away and get back. And I'm going to draw the gun and follow up with deadly force. That uh, doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to fire upon him, but I'm going to let him know, hey, now I've got the gun. It's out. It's pointed at you. And give verbal commands. And hopefully uh, somebody's on their cell phone calling 911 and getting the cavalry on the way to help come arrest this retard for trying to grab your gun. Um, but like Aaron mentioned just a little bit ago, and it's a good point, if somebody comes up behind you and they grab this gun, and they get around you and they grab your neck, or they come in like this, this is a really, really, really shitty day right here. So again, I'm going to be a big fan of trapping. You don't have much time here because he's got your neck. you got your carotid, you got your windpipe here. Bad things are going to be happening. If you can get to a blade and you can start working the face and cyclic in the face or come in and maybe dig one into a thigh and hit that femoral artery or even the groin, you're going to want, that's why I'm a big, big advocate of carrying a blade or even a tack flashlight. You know, it's got the DNA collectors on the, on the face of the flashlight here. Those are awesome if tools, and that's why I'm really a big advocate of carrying that stuff on your belt. So a lot of people say, well, God, you carry such an aggressive loadout, and it's like, well, it's there for a reason. So anyway, guys, hey, thanks for watching.